Paneling Tools for Rhino has a great command for making custom paneling routines using lists of objects. These objects can be single surfaces or poly surfaces, as in this case. And if you keep the shape of these objects to square or rectangular boundaries, the results will be a lot more intuitive once you populate between two separate grids. And you will need two separate grids to use this command. Here I have one grid colored green in the background. And I've also adjusted the front grid to be a little bit closer on one side than the other. The shape of the pattern will change as it populates between the two grids. Now the command that you want to use is under Paneling Tools, Paneling from Grid, Panel Custom 3D Variable. And the actual command name is ptpanel 3 d custom variable You'll be prompted to select the first grid, then the second grid, and then you get a choice for a pattern method. It's either list or mean, and we'll be using list in this case. And then you choose a distribution method. You can choose curvature or tractors. I'll choose random for the first example. And I'll also group the result into one selection after it's done. Enter to accept those options, and then you get to select the list of unit patterns. And the order in which you select them will determine the order in which they populate between the two grids. Press Enter when done, and there is our random paneling routine based on those unit patterns. Now if I undo that and run the command again, I'll change my distribution method to curve attractors. Press Enter, and then I'll be prompted to select some curves. I'll just select one, press Enter, and then I'll select two visually different unit patterns so you can see the result. So one unit pattern populates closer to the curve attractor, and one unit pattern is further away from it. You can also use point attractors. So if I run the command another time, I'll change the distribution method to point attractors, and then I'll select some of the points in the grid. And then I'll select the two unit patterns press enter, and you can see that the first pattern populates around each of the attractor points, and the second pattern will be in the middle. Now the denser this grid, the denser the gradation of the patterning between these two units. Another option you have for distribution method with this command is called bitmap. And here I have an arrayed grid, and I've made a copy of it right above it, so I have two grids to use and I also have two unit patterns that are visually distinct. I'll run the command again and select both grids, make sure that distribution method is set to bitmap, and then a file browser comes up where I can select an image. Even though it's called bitmap, I'll select a JPEG and that will work. The important part here is to see where the black and white areas of the image are. Black will be one of the unit patterns, white will be the other one. And then we're prompted to select the list patterns in order. The first one will be the black, and the second one will be the white. I'll press Enter, and there is the resulting pattern. Now I'm using the 32-bit version of Rhino 4, the release version. And if we had a very dense grid or a very complicated unit pattern that we were using this bitmap distribution method with, we may run out of RAM on a 32-bit system. In those cases, I would recommend using the 64-bit build of paneling tools in conjunction with the version 5 work in progress of Rhino, which is also available in a 64-bit build. And that's how you use the custom 3D variable paneling tool in Paneling Tools for Rhino.